Array subset is a node found under array and array subset. What this does is it'll take a portion of this array and it'll turn it on the output. So for this example, I just want, let's say this five through seven. So if we look at index zero, one, two, three, four, so the fourth index, and the length of one, two, three, and I hit run, I just received that five, that six, and the seven, because my index was four, the length of it was three, which is five, six, and seven, and that is my output. Working with two-dimensional array, an array subset can be a little tricky, because when you create the array, you're gonna get four points, and you have your index row, your index, your index row, your length for the row, your index column, and the length for your column. So if I did my row index of, let's just say one, and I want a length of three, that should be not this first row, but this second row and continue. But when I hit run, nothing happens. So when all four of these are connected, they have to work kind of in, in unison. So if I wanted my column, I have my row selected, and if I wanted my column, let's say I wanted this seven. So zero, one, two, I want it row two, and I want the length of two, because I'll, I'll try to grab this bottom corner here, the seven, eight, 11, and 12. I'll set my row index also to two. So as we can see, I grabbed this bottom corner. And so if we run through this again, our row index was set to one. So if we go zero, one, and our length will be two. So it's counting this one to be one and then two. So these bottom two rows. Our column is also set to two, two. So we go zero, one, two. So this column, and we want a length of two. So basically what's happening, basically what's happening is this. I tell my first row, I want these guys right here. And then when I set my column, it says, hey, I want these guys right here. So what it's doing is it's just grabbing these elements when all four are connected. So if I wanted to change it to, let's say, this two, three, this six, and the seven, or, you know, let's just do the six and the seven. So I want my row to be zero, one, so row one, and my length will be it'll still be two, excuse me, it'll be one because it's just one row. And now I wanna set my columns to column zero, column one. So our first column and our length is two because six and seven are two columns but only on one row. So when I hit run, I just grab this six and the seven. So these kind of work together similar to how I drew this diagram. So on that particular case, it went column one, just right there, and then grab my red, it selected the two columns I selected. And I told it the length of two. So if I only had the length of one, this would be right there, so it'd be just element there six. But I told it two, so it takes only the elements that both boxes are drawn around. So that's our six and our seven. So. Sometimes this is not desirable though. So that's where we can actually remove chunks of this code. And now if we run this, now it grabs the whole row. So when I was editing this video, I found out I made a mistake with one of my little examples. So this one looks a little bit different and then the rest of the examples will continue. But basically in this example, we have our two dimensional array and instead of connecting all four of these points, I just connected the row and then the length of the row. And I disconnected the index for the column and the length of the column. So what you can do is, here I just have my input array, just one through 15. And what we can do is we select the row we want and then how many of those rows. So if I select row one, it should be this row. But if we run it, obviously we get a zero because I told the length to be zero. But if I want the length to be one, 
and I run this, I get that row, the 6 through 10 here, because it's row 1 and the length of 1. But if I wanted everything from this row 1 and below, I could just increase the length. So now I have a length of 2, and when I run this code, I now get the 6 through the 15. So this is an example of just grabbing the rows of a two-dimensional array. The exact same thing can be said about the columns. So if I wanted just this column 3 and 4, you know, 0, 1, 2, and I run it, it's going to give me those last two units. If I wanted the first column, I can print out just this column. But if I wanted a length of, uh, we'll say just say 2, and I run it now, it doesn't give me this last column. It does not give me this 4. So it's a little interesting playing with these. Um, I typically have to build like a little example for myself whenever I run into these. So it's something to keep in mind. When they're just one dimension, it's pretty easy to use the array subset. But it starts to get a little tricky when you have your two dimensions. And... And that's where knowing the order of how kind of the four of these lay out and how they work in unison kind of with the two blocks I drew here. So just keep in mind of it gets really interesting, especially when you start going into three dimensions using the array subset. But I will save that for a different video for sure. So hope this was helpful. Hope you learned something and uh, stay tuned for more.